Underwater housings can unlock an entirely new realm for photographers and videographers. But, can one of the cheapest underwater housings actually help produce professional quality photos and videos? Hey, what is going on everybody? Uh, lately I've had a few folks message me on Instagram asking about what waterproof housing I use uh, um, since I shoot on the water a lot and in the water a lot. And uh, I've been meaning to make a video about the waterproof housing that I've been using for a while. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Sea Frogs underwater housing. A lot of the reviews on YouTube are people who have just used these once or twice. So I figured it would be useful to put out a review uh, somebody like myself who's been using it long term and used it dozens of times already. And I think the best way to kind of break something like this down is just going to be simple pros and cons. So that's what we're going to do. So let's hop straight into the pros. So for starters, I bought this for the Sony a7C. Um, it is a camera specific uh, deal, right? So you got all your buttons and dials and that is one of the top reasons that I chose to go with Sea Frogs instead of one of the other um, budget housing options out there is that I wanted to have the ability to completely control the camera uh, without having to take it in and out of the housing to make adjustments and change aperture and ISO and even my zoom. So I have a zoom control right here. And when you pick out uh, one of these Sea Frogs housings, it gives you not just the camera model option, but a few lens model options. Of course, it doesn't have every lens on Earth, uh, but it does have most of the Sony and a few third party options. So I've got the uh, Zeiss F4 16 to 35 in this uh, setup, and it has a corresponding uh, zoom ring that basically, well, I should say a zoom gear that mounts onto the lens and allows me to zoom in and out, which has been super nifty. I've really been enjoying having control over everything and not having to use a more generic one size fits all housing. On the subject of the port, this part right here, this big thing, uh, they're interchangeable, just like a professional housing would be. Um, so, you know, I've got the dome port on here because this is great for taking over under shots, you know, where you're halfway underwater and halfway above the surface and people can then you know do that cool thing um, but you can also just get a regular port um, once again varying sizes based on the lens so i really appreciate that and if something terrible happens to this port and it breaks i can just buy a new port instead of having to buy a whole new housing I can't chewed mine up right there so if i ever get sick of looking at that i can just buy a new port another one of the pros of course i cannot talk about this housing without mentioning this is the price. Uh, I paid $459 for this setup with the big dome port. Um, there's the cheaper version if you were just using like the Sony kit lens, the whatever 26 to 60, 28 to 60, whatever that lens is, it comes with the A7C and just a regular port. Uh, that one's $379 and that is just like ridiculously cheap. So budget obviously is, is pretty great, especially once again for having all the functions that you have on this housing. I should mention that this grip that I've added on the outside here, that is not part of this kit. It's just the housing. Uh, I added this grip so that I can get a good hold on this thing uh, if I'm shooting underwater. Uh, so, you know, if you order one based on this video, don't be disappointed by not having those sweet grips. Speaking of the grips, another pro is that this thing is very easy to accessorize. Um, so you'll see it's got a little cold shoe mount right on top. Um, I've actually got a top grip that I mount on there if I'm shooting just kind of downwards. And even on top of the top grip, I've added this phone mount so I can just pop my phone on there when I'm shooting over unders and I can sync with my phone's Bluetooth and just see what the shot output looks like underwater. Because that's kind of one of the hard things about shooting with an underwater housing is if you're not down there looking, you know, at your screen, you can't tell what's going on. So you're kind of just shooting blind. 
And so I really liked this setup to be able to hold the camera easily and also see what I'm shooting. And then of course, like I mentioned, I've got these grips down at the bottom for when I'm actually shooting underwater. So that's been one of the cool things that I've figured out over time uh, with using this housing is just, it's been really nice to be able to add more things to the housing to make it more functional and easier to use. As far as quality goes, I can't really compare this housing to like a super high-end camera housing because I've never used one of the professional ones that's all metal and glass and super fancy. Um, but I will say it's, it's about what I expected. Um, I would compare it to like the old GoPro housings if anybody remembers whatever year that was, like threes, fours, maybe even fives had those plastic housings. It's kind of what this reminds me of. The port itself is pretty heavy duty plastic. Uh, the way the latches work kind of reminds me of that. So, you know, don't expect this thing to be super heavy and able to get hit by a sledgehammer. Um, but for a 400 some odd dollar housing, you know, I think it, it lines up. It has done what it's supposed to do. I haven't had any leaks. I haven't had any major, major issues. Uh, and after six months, I would say that it seems like a good enough deal for me. Uh, another cool feature that I really wanted to mention in here is that it actually has a moisture sensor inside of the housing um, and it's pretty loud. So basically it's a little red light that flashes and it just beeps at you if water starts getting inside of the housing. Uh, I only know that because I once opened the housing up while the camera was still in there. Uh, and when I opened it, a little water got inside and started beeping at me. And then once I closed the housing, it just kept beeping. I'm sure there's a way to turn it off, but uh, it just turned off on its own over time. So um, that's kind of neat. That way, you know, if you're underwater shooting, water starts getting in there, you don't see it. You'll hear it or you'll see that little red light flashing, which is pretty sweet. Speaking of accessories, one of the cool things Sea Frogs has done is they actually have this little vacuum. Uh, so basically, if you were actually diving, which I haven't done yet because I'm mostly shooting kind of at or around the surface, but if you were diving or going down deeper than just the surface with your camera, there's a little pump port right here, and you would just open that, put the pump in, and it'll vacuum all the air out and basically pressurize the housing so that water doesn't try to, try to seep in there. Um, so that's pretty cool. Like I said, I haven't used it yet, haven't really needed to, but it seems worth it to me if I ever am going in deeper water, which I plan to, then I have that option to pressurize really easily. I feel like that's a pretty hefty pros list. I don't wanna go on forever singing this thing praises without mentioning that there are a few flaws with it. Uh, so now we are going to talk about some of the cons and issues that I've had with the housing over the past six months that I've been using it. Uh, first, and I hate to, you know, bring this up because it's kind of silly, but let's talk about this logo. It's, it's so cheesy and it's all over the housing when you get it. Um, you know, there was one right here and right there and I took it off and then there was one right here on the top and I covered it up with a GoPro uh, sticker and then there's still one on the bottom. And, you know, I know this isn't a professional housing necessarily, but myself and I think a lot of other people would use it for professional shoots and it doesn't look very professional when you have a little cartoon frog on your uh, on your camera. So, I don't know, see frogs if you're watching this, maybe do a logo update that looks a little more professional or just don't put the logo on the housing at all. Now that I've commented on the silliest thing that I could, uh, I'm gonna get into some more serious cons uh, and this goes back to quality. I mentioned earlier it being about the quality I'd expected and also mentioned enjoying all of the functions, the buttons and the dials. The thing with lots of buttons and dials is it provides opportunity for things to break. I will say I've had a few times on shoots where some of these knobs just haven't really done what they're supposed to do. Usually if I have an issue, I can just pop the housing open. You can see all this stuff is pretty simple. I haven't actually had any of the parts break. It's usually just something not lining up or like a spring is weird or something's not turning right needs to be realigned. So I've been able to just make fine adjustments and, and get everything functioning again. But there are a lot of complex little parts in there. And I could see if somebody was being harder on it than I am, maybe some of those breaking and then losing some of that functionality. The other part of quality that I'll mention is the, the dome itself seems to scratch really easily. Now I have nothing to compare this to, but I do know that on my first few shoots, I went out in calm, like very flat water. Uh, wasn't really exposed to any sand and somehow I was just getting lots of little fine scratches across the dome and to the point that in probably the fourth or fifth shoot that I used it in, uh, they were very visible. 
thankfully one of my friends and fellow underwater housing users uh, told me about this Novus cleaning kit. This is not a sponsored thing, guys. This is part of your life. If you buy an underwater housing, you're going to need a kit to take care of it and clean it and buff out the little scratches. Uh, it is not that hard if you stay on top of it, but if you let stuff really build up, it becomes pretty time consuming. You're gonna sit there for a while trying to kind of rub all those little scratches out. So um, just be aware if you get a housing, you're probably going to need to get uh, a cleaning kit like that. I'll leave a link down under the video in case you are looking for something along those lines. So all that is to say that if you buy a waterproof housing, maintenance is gonna be part of your life. If you buy a Sea Frogs waterproof housing, definitely is. So don't just expect that every time you go out to shoot, everything's gonna be ready to roll and you're never gonna have any issues. You will have to do some cleaning of the port uh, and maybe occasionally fiddle with the buttons and the mechanics of it to keep everything working smoothly. Another slight issue that I've had, and this is with the, uh, the dome port in particular, is that even though this dome is fitted to the Zeiss 16 to 35 F4 lens, I've had issues where around the edges, if I'm shooting at 16 millimeters, I can actually see the reflection of like the words written on the lens, which is pretty disappointing. It's only happened a couple times when I'm shooting all the way at 16, so as wide as I can, and also with really strong backlight. So basically I think what's happening is so much light is coming through the port and it's reflecting off of the lens and going back onto the port. And because it's so bright and there's so much going on, basically the, the port and the lens are just reflecting back into each other. And so I'm seeing the lens in the shot. Uh, it's not happened to me a lot of times, only a couple times. Um, and once again, like when it is really backlit. So um, something to be mindful of there. I can't say if that is the case with all the ports, but I can say for sure on the 16 to 35 dome port that uh, that can happen. Another and slightly more interesting con that I learned about this housing after I bought it is that if you are buying through any third party outlet, basically if it's not Seafrog's website, uh, then you are not getting a warranty on your housing, uh, which is a little disappointing because if you get on the Seafrog's website, uh, they're quite a bit more expensive. Uh, and so you're paying a lot more money for the warranty, which kind of makes sense. Uh, the workaround I kind of learned there is if you're buying it on Amazon, like most people probably are, they offer some kind of protection plan that's fairly inexpensive that I think is good for a couple of years. Uh, and when you add that, it's still quite a bit cheaper than the Seafrog option is. So there is a workaround, still a little bit disappointing. And finally, another pro that is also a con is because of the custom nature of these being fitted to each different model of camera. If you buy a different camera, you then have to buy a different housing. Um, so this is the A7C. I recently bought an A7S III and there's just no way. You can see that's in there pretty snug and just to be able to change the modes and such, um, this button right here has to be right on top of your mode dial. Um, it's just in there super snug. So there's no way that you're gonna grab a different camera and just pop it in there and have everything work or anything work for that matter. It just won't fit. If you're on the cusp of upgrading cameras, uh, maybe don't buy a Seafrog housing for your current camera because then you're just gonna have to buy another one for your new camera. Uh, that would kind of take me into my overall thoughts. Clearly, I like this housing. I have a lot of good things to say about it. And when I bought my A7S III and needed to get a housing for it, I bought another one. So now I have the A7S III Seafrog's housing. Uh, cheesy logo and all. Um, I haven't really gotten to use it yet. I've put the camera in there to make sure everything works and it does, but I haven't actually gotten to, to put it in the application. Um, and this one I've got with the basic little uh, port. So I'll get to experiment with that some as well. Maybe I'll do a separate review for the one for the A7S III. Uh, but yeah, if I bought a second one, it obviously is pretty good. Uh, and after the learning curve of understanding the maintenance and understanding how to work with the housing, uh, I've been really happy with it and uh, I think it's going to continue to treat me really well. That's going to do it for today's video, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Uh, and if it was, please let me know. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe. And if you have any questions about this housing, um, please let me know and I will get back to you in the comments. Thanks again for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.